<laughs> well, welcome, Blue Marble Riders, to my back-to-back -back review of the 2014-2019 Vstrom 1000 with Suzuki's new offering in that department, Suzuki Vstrom 1050 XA. A little bit about the old bike. Same engine, same chassis, almost the same suspension except for the rear shock. New engine is uprated to 11.5 to 1 compression ratio over the old 11.3, giving it about six more horsepower. However, the bike, the new bike, the Suzuki Vstrom 1050, carries about eight more kilograms of weight. So I'm pretty sure that will be negated. The old bike, this one, uh, traction control, one and two and off, ABS, not lean sensitive, no cruise control, no heated grips as standard. And now on to the Suzuki 1050XA. Okay folks, welcome to my review of the Suzuki V-Strom 1050. This is, as you can see, the yellow and blue example. The XA, what does it have over the ordinary A version? It has laced or spoked wheels, a center stand standard, cruise control, an upgraded electronics package. Oh, crash bars, did I mention that? Down here we have a nice plastic or rubberized engine casing protector comes uh, stock with its aluminum shield but I'd have to say if you're going off-road you're gonna have to get something more substantial this is the oil filter it's got laced spoked wheels I quite like the look although they're gonna be hard to clean the brakes are identical to the previous version as is the suspension on the front although the rear has a slightly lengthened spring to take away the harshness I didn't notice any harshness with my 2014-2019 model, but apparently it's there. The bike's geometry, as in the chassis, the rake and trail, and the swing arm are identical to the previous generation. Like the last one, it's got a full LED rear light, and the can is just as ugly. The engine 1037 cc's identical to the last one compression ratio bumped up from 11.3 to 1 to 11.5 to 1 the windshield is adjustable but you have to stop to do it i had it on full up i'll let you know what it's like it's not too hard to adjust as you can see it's got the dr big headlight and it's got the Dr. Big beak. That's a love-hate thing I hear. The big V-Strom 1050 is shod with Bridgestone Battle Axe. Slightly more aggressive style than my bike came with. Glancing from the bike at the back, it is very reminiscent of the last one. Except, of course, when you're riding along, you're going to notice the different screen and the more elegant dash. Of course, it also comes with a two-part seat, which you can see here. And underneath the seat is a 12-volt outlet. Okay, the dashboard comes with all mod cons. It's LCD. I quite like it. I prefer the dials on my old one, but it tells you everything you need to know. Hats off to Suzuki for making this a very easily readable screen. It's an LCD readout. The bike has three riding modes. It's very easy to use. You've got the same switch gear as the last one. Here's the mode button. Here's the selector. So if I press mode, which I've already done, you can see it shows me I'm in A. Okay, A is the most responsive throttle that you can get on the engine mapping. Then if you cycle down, you can go to B, which is the middle of the road, the uh, everyday riding, commuting. And apparently C is really good for in the city or wet, where you don't want it to be too responsive. You're starting and stopping in traffic, merging or lane splitting. Any of those things, C works for that. I'm going to put it back in A, which feels more like the original bike. Going back down, cycling down with the mode button, I'm now on the SDMS, which basically is the 
traction control. I'm in traction control one, which is the least uh, intrusive. I haven't felt it at all. It also, if I cycle down, has a traction control two, which is new. The 1050's traction control three setting is about equivalent to the last generation's two setting, the rain. If I cycle up to two, that's between the old one and traction control one. And if I cycle up to one, here I've got my traditional least intrusive traction control setting, the one that I ride around with most on my bike. I don't ever use two on my bike except for in the rain, and I have no reason to believe I'd ever use two on this. I would hop between three and one. And ABS is on one right now. I may have to have it started. I'll give that a shot later on. But that's the normal one. You can turn it down. So that basically is the LCD display. It comes with trip A, trip B, and all the usual stuff. Fuel economy. It comes with its own fuel gauge, uh, rev counter, gear selector, all the usual stuff. Nothing special, nothing lacking. The bike also has uh, cruise control. And basically, you can set it right here. Uh, you set it. So if I turn this on. How do I know cruise control is on? Well, once I'm riding and I press the button, you'll see this symbol come on. Uh, so there it's on, and now to set it, it's just literally the set button, and then add, take away. It also has the quick start feature. So you turn it on, you literally press the starter button, and there it is. So this bike uh, comes in about 15.5 right now. There's a $500 deduction from the price, and they're also giving a Garmin Zumo away. And you can see where it could be mounted. I'll be moving this in a minute because there is some vibration here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So right now I'm riding in mode A, as you can see, and the throttle response seems about the same as the 2014-2019 uh, bike. Throttle response B is probably the one I'd use most often. I really quite like it. Now straight away the riding position is very similar to the uh, previous generation. Suzuki have evolved this bike, they haven't redesigned it. Now that's come in for a lot of criticism in the press. Why haven't they done this? Why haven't they done that? Oh, it's too much like the old one. Well, I think to give Suzuki their due, they're onto a winner and they know it. This is one of the most popular bikes ever sold in the ADV market. Not only because of its price, hello, hello old chap, but also because of the ergonomics and the reliability of the machine. It's also quite refined. It's got a nice clutch, and I have to agree with one of my readers that this clutch does feel just a little lighter than the previous generations. If you saw my video on my top five hates of the uh, previous generation's bike, one of them was that the clutch could be quite heavy in traffic. The bike is not quite as torquey as the old one, low down. There's definitely a little bit of a, a lag compared with the old one when I'm in fourth gear and I'm low down. It just doesn't kind of uh, bite out of the corners like the old one did. And, and that's because of the compression ratio. The old one was 11.3 to 1. And uh, they mapped it so most of the torque was coming in at around 4,000 RPM. With this one, most of the torque's coming in a little over 6,000. I'll put the uh, real figures on the screen for you. But the horsepower and torque have been bumped up on this one. Uh, and when I say bumped up, I mean minuscule amounts of torque and horsepower increase for the engine. But the, where it comes in on the rev range is higher. Now, for me, one of the things I love about my 2014-2019 V-Strom is where the power and the torque comes in. It's real world and it's usable. It's one of the only bikes for a litre bike that has that power come in so, so low on the rev range. Not that this is particularly lacking, it's just the difference between the two bikes. Where this comes into its own is it is, well, for want of a better word, slightly revier. Whereas the other one is, you know, pretty well uh, about as responsive everywhere in the rev range over 5,000 RPM. Once you're over 5,000 RPM, you might as well just shift because uh, you're not getting any more out of it as far as rate of acceleration. Whereas this bike is, uh, everything is mapped up. So there's less down low here, but there is more kick and more response up high. I think the V-Strom's lost something for that. In another sense, it's gained something. This is probably going to appeal to a more broad spectrum of riders who are used to that sort of response from motorcycles. Personally, for myself, 
I would like it mapped like it was. This is fun though. It is definitely feels a little sportier because of it. So one thing I can confirm already is uh, the vibration on here is too much for my little camera to deal with right now. So, so I will uh, see if I can fix that back up. This also has the clutch assist. So as I can take my hand off the throttle and you can hear that happening as I release the clutch. The other nice thing about this is the hill holder back brake. So essentially, all you have to do if on, on the hill is tap the back brake and it will hold you for 30 seconds. Now, I did try it and it's not abrupt when it comes off. It seems to come off slowly and gives you plenty of warning if you've just got your legs down and you're not covering the front brake. So uh, what I would tend to do is stop and, and dab that hill holder when I thought we were going to go if I needed it whilst holding onto the front brake prior to that. So I'm going to do something very naughty here and just stop in the road here because there's no one behind me right now. And I'm going to hold it here and I'm rolling back. I touch that brake and now legs down and I'm holding it. It's great. Here I go and I can feel it go off. The nose dips a little as it goes and off goes the bike. And yes, it just feels a little anemic where the last bike felt torquey. It feels a little anemic and more, more like a 650 under, under 3000 RPM. Above that is where the litre bike kicks in on this one. So if you're used to your normal high revving, higher revving litre bike, this has got, I would say, less V-twin characteristics low down than the last one. I keep going back to it, but it is noticeable. In case you're thinking, well, you know, that's all just numbers and figures. It's just the same as the last one, only in a different color with a few more options. No, the essence, the soul of the bike is slightly different now. Loving, really loving, not loving that, could have waited, but really loving the ergonomics of this. It is slightly different, just slightly. The handlebar placement, perhaps my hands are a little more forward. Something I'm not liking is the windshield. The windshield is in the full up position right now and you can only adjust it by getting off. Uh, I don't have too much problem with that because once my shield is adjusted, I, I tend to leave it there. I hardly ever adjust my shield now. I've got it where I want it. So I don't have a problem with that. But this is definitely giving me a little more airflow than my Givi. I would say it's much better than the stock one that came with the Suzuki uh, V-Strom from 2014 to 2019 or the stock 650 one, but it's still allowing quite a bit of airflow to hit my bill right here. Now, is it my bill? Don't know, but there, it, this is as high as it goes and it's literally hitting me right at the top of my helmet. So if it wasn't my bill, it would be giving me a slight rumble. Uh, I'm not getting double vision and I'm not getting a headache or anything like that, but it's a sort of a wearing grating feeling and I think I would definitely be uh, replacing that. Now, I'm going to put this back into third there because I was at about uh, one of my favorite RPMs, 4,000. And here's where it picks up, five and six. It starts to pick up. Handles pretty much like the last one. The ride is wonderfully comfortable. I'm going to do another stop up here ahead, my, one of my traditional stops. There's a, some nasty tarmac here and the bike is soaking it up very, very nicely. Pretty much like I'd expect my last one to. Perhaps even slightly softer. Perhaps that's because mine's got 35,000 clicks on it and this is new. But it's very similar to the last one. I'm not noticing a great deal of difference. Brakes are nice. Very nice. So my impressions of the bike. The seat's nifty. Some people have complained about it, but I'm finding it very, very comfortable. It's a two-piece seat. It doesn't look especially expensive. It's sort of a, a cheap, foamy look to it. Don't know how that's going to last and how durable it'll be. But uh, right now, the comfort on it is, is very nice. I've been in for about an hour, an hour and a half on this. And uh, yeah, super comfortable. 
I think it's good value for money. It's coming with the crash bars at 15.5, the center stand. It's got another tether here for power heated vest. It's got a 12 volt outlet. It's got a USB connector in there, LCD screen, all sorts of electronics. The ABS is very interesting in that it's uh, uh, sensitive. It, it will feed back to you if you're on, on, on the dirt. It knows you're on the dirt and it will reduce the amount of uh, ABS uh, depending on how hard you're pulling and the wheel slippage. I think that's a fantastic feature. As we walk around the bike, I don't mind it at all. The colors may be a bit garish for me. Maybe I would have preferred the orange and white one, uh, but I think this would grow on me. The wheels are nice, laced. I really appreciate that. But I'm wondering if they're a little heavier because it does feel as if it's not quite as quick to respond as the last one. And you're talking fractions, folks. It's not a big thing. The look, I don't mind it at all. Uh, the square headlight, or should I say, what is that? Uh, that's a hexagonal head headlight, uh, r reminiscent of the Dr. Big. LED and very functional. Really enjoying it. The windscreen, I would definitely replace this. There is no forward and backwards like there was on the last one. It is solid there. I can't shift it. I, well, I would replace that because I'm definitely getting some buffet off it. Okay, let's carry on and get back to some of those features. So let's change the throttle response from A to C and see if there's a difference. Love how easy this is. Very, very intuitive. Okay, so I'm on uh, C. I'm on gravel, by the way. Ooh, a little bit of off-road with the V-Strom. Here we go. Yeah, that is, that is very soft. Very soft. Incredibly, incredibly different from A. Very, very noticeable. You're going to have no doubt at all knowing that you are in a different throttle mode here. It is smooth. In fact, whether this is because of the mapping, I don't know, but I'm at 3,000 RPM now. Let's go down to two and a half. I'm in fourth gear, two and a half now, and I'm going to open it up. That is smoother, just slightly smoother than my V-Strom. Now, whether that's the age of my V-Strom, I don't think so. There, I, I'm loving how soft this response is. It's, you know, you're tired at the end of a day, you're in stop and go traffic. This is the mode. This is a nice addition. It is something I feel I could benefit from if I was to move on up to the bike. I would seriously consider that. It's got the response right now, I would say, down low. Uh, and I, I, can, I can play with the throttle in this, you know. It's got some latitude for me to, to come backwards and forwards here without overreacting to it. Rider mode B. Let's try it. Throttle's closed. Settings. B. There we are. Okay. First gear. Off we go. No one coming. Very nice. Yeah, very predictable. Nothing hoppy, skippy, jumpy about it. A little more aggressive than C, as you'd expect but not as peppy as A. Probably the one you're gonna spend most of the time in. Now I can't tell, but I'm pretty sure that it isn't the throttle setting, the ABC, that is causing that sort of 650 feel under 3000 RPM. I really do think it's the new engine mapping, the compression ratio, the way that they have spaced the torque and the horsepower up a little bit. I've, I'm gonna try it again, I'll put it back in A. Uh, this is the most leery, if you like, of uh, all the uh, settings, the rider modes. Um, I don't have rider modes on any of my bikes apart from the Huseberg. And personally, I use my right hand for it. But uh, this is a novelty. It definitely makes a difference. And if I were riding city street, I would be in B or C. If I was in rain, I'd definitely be in C. It feels so safe and comforting and predictable. This is A. likes being revved much more than the previous generation. It's more responsive above five. 
I just really, for all you Vistrom owners out there with the old one, I know we're all thinking the same thing. They've remapped that engine. Can I live with it? I really enjoy the torquey nature of my old one. And by moving the power settings up 2000 RPM, the torque settings up 2000 RPM, is this bike going to suit me? So third, let's go two and a half here. So uh, here we go. I mean, hey, it's hard to get there. Okay. Yeah, initially, there's a little less grunt down there as I thought. Rider mode A has definitely allowed me to make it a little more responsive though. I could live with it. I could definitely live with it. Definitely getting some hammering on the head though, folks. My pet hate for the V-Strom has not changed. The windshield still on this third generation bike is still hitting me in the head. But yeah, the bike is, uh, is nice. I like it. Yes, there's definitely, definitely more up top. It's, it's a little more exciting. I'm not quite sure what all the moaning has been about. It's got a very good familiarity. It's very familiar to me. If you're a V-Strom rider, you are going to know you're on a V-Strom. Don't worry about that. If you're a good Strom Trooper and you've been a Strom Trooper for a long time, this isn't going to let you down. You are definitely on a V-Strom. Yes, the office space looks a little different, a little more technologically forward, but that's not a problem. But I think this is a neater integration. I also like this, that you could add cameras or GPSs or anything else to it that you want. The screen's got to go which again should bring you some comfort V-Strom owners because we've all been there. They've always had to go. That's why Givi, Pouge and a whole host of aftermarket accessories in screens are there. This has got to go for me. At this speed, it's fine. At highway speeds, it's not going to be. I've already discovered that. I love the new features it has, particularly the fact it's got cruise control, which we'll try on the highway in a minute. The fact that it's got lean sensitive ABS and lean sensitive traction control is a big one. I think that has put it up with the big boys now as far as the technology goes. TFT screen could care less. I ride a motorcycle. I'm, I'm not looking at a video screen. I'm not that generation and I don't mean to point the finger at anyone and, and dismiss it. It is some people's thing. But a TFT screen or an LCD screen, it has absolutely no consequence to me. Can I read it? What's it showing me? Is it reliable? Is it waterproof? Will it work, KTM? These are the questions you will have to ask. We'll see with this one. If, however, you are stuck on that low grunt and that low torque, you are probably going to be slightly disappointed by the fact that that isn't completely gone, but it's nowhere near what it was before. There's a difference. You will notice it in the seat of the pants. Yeah, I'm liking that uh, that C mode. It's very, very gentle, but uh, not for today. So throttle off. No one behind me. Well, there is someone behind me. They're a long way. I just give it some gas. Let's throttle. And back onto A. Cool. Okay, let's do some highway. Gearbox feels nice. I'm just shoving up and down for a little bit here. Yeah, way more pep. Way more pep over five but a hell of a lot of banging going on in my helmet very smooth though very very smooth let's try that cruise control she's on i'm going to set her now she's set hand off beautiful staying on beautifully there touch the back brake and off she goes and the typical engine braking on the v-strom comes in like i said screen's not as bad as the previous generation and the generation before that stocker, but it is still not acceptable. Sorry, Suzuki, you got to do your wind tunnel testing a little better than this. How is she at uh, light speeds here? So here I am, light speeds. Oh yeah, she is very easy, not top heavy at all, just like the last one. Much better than the 650 in that respect. I'm crawling along not having to put a foot down 
it is super easy to keep upright no problem turning circles nice very easy low speed and that's in a mode folks that's in the the larry mode as i'll call it not bad at all i imagine in c mode working through traffic at those speeds is going to be a doddle definitely definitely a good commuter and i would have to say second gear takeoff here we go yes Yeah, you can really feel the top end there. This is a different bike. Once you get over six and 7,000 RPM, folks, it's a very different bike. It's got a lot more pep. For those of you uh, with a V-Strom looking for a sports bike uh, as well to satisfy that, uh, that itch, you may have found it. This is a lot more peppy above six and seven. I'm reasonably impressed with that, actually. Yeah, the low down grunt is a little more on this, but the top end is a lot more on that. It's interesting. Lovely to have my uh, bubble of calm here though again. So riding the second generation V-Strom 1000 after having done a back-to-back -back with the 1050, what do I notice? Well, I noticed that the V-Strom 1050 is actually slightly smoother. The engine itself has been a little further refined, in my opinion, and they've evolved it even further. I can notice a few vibes on this that I take for granted right now at 4,000 RPM. I'm noticing a few vibes now, whether that's the traditional clutch basket problem, which the 2014-19 still have, by the way, or whether it is a refinement for the engine, I don't know, but it definitely feels slightly less smooth than the 1050 does. What else do I notice? I wouldn't characterize this as a sporty engine at all. The 1050, I would characterize as a, a, a semi-sporty engine. It's definitely a lot of fun uh, to rev. It's smooth too. I don't feel any real obtrusive uh, vibes anywhere up there. It's managed to stay smooth most of the way up. It's a more exciting engine above 5,000 RPM. So back to the big question, Blue Marble Rider. Would you consider trading in your 2014 on a 2020 1050? And my answer to that is not yet. The reason I say not yet is this. One, it's not a huge difference between the bikes. There are some character changes, but really, you know, you're still on a beast from 1000. They, they've evolved it really nicely, as I've mentioned before. It is definitely an evolution, nothing radical. For all you people considering it, you've got nothing to be frightened of. You're going to notice a few things. It's got a wonderful electronics package. The ergonomics are just the same. The engine character is slightly different. But the reason I wouldn't upgrade, the reason I wouldn't do it, is that, one, there's still a lot of life left in this bike yet, and it's not a big enough leap to make a difference. Two, the slightly sportier nature of the bike is covered by my Z900RS. And perhaps most important, I think it's too expensive right now. It's up around 16. Now there's an offer in Canada right now with 500 off for the XA, the top of the line model, and a free Zumo Garmin. But I know Suzuki and they will be cutting those prices. They know their niche. And uh, while the V-Strom is well built and a beautiful, beautiful bike, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, it is uh, definitely not seen as a premium bike compared with things like the BMW or the KTM or, you know, maybe even the Africa Twin. So they know their price slot. At 16, it started to be in that zone. And I'm not sure that people will recognize it as worth the money in that zone, even though, in my opinion, it can compete with them quite nicely, thank you very much. I don't think it will have the recognition out there in uh, Motoland to be able to uh, hold that position. So I think Suzuki, to cut this short, I think Suzuki are going to bring those prices down. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the ordinary 1050A at around 12, 12.5, and the XA at around 13.5 Canadian. If that's the case, and after a year, perhaps then, and it's not such hot property, it's not so new, it's been in the market for a couple of years, because you know Suzuki are going to keep that one pretty much the same now for five years. 
perhaps two years down the road I might consider it. That's if there aren't other models out there and I'm no longer doing uh, two up riding. If I'm no longer doing two up riding then I may go for something lighter like a Tenere 700. Having not ridden one yet I can't say. So no, the long and the short is I won't be upgrading to the 1050 yet. But give it time, wait for those prices to come down, wait for those uh, a couple of recalls to happen, which always happens in a new model year for any bike, that'll be less on the V-Strom because it's an evolution and most of it's still the same from previous generations, so I don't see that there's going to be a big issue. Don't know if they've changed that clutch basket, I doubt it. But wait for the recalls to have taken place a couple of years down the road, the Fioraws died down and the prices will too. And then, then I think the V-Strom becomes a viable option to replace Simba here. Right now though, Simba and Mia kind of gelled. We're sort of blended and worn off the hard bits from each other and we meet in the middle. I think some V-Strom owners might be ready for it. I think I could be ready for it. So, Blue Marble Riders, I leave the ball firmly in your court. Let me know what you think, let me know if you've ridden it, what you noticed, let me know if given the review you've heard from me that you're considering riding it or that uh, the reduction in low RPM torque and the increase in high RPM power and torque is a deal breaker for you. Okay folks, this is the Blue Marble Rider, out. I smell you behind Harleys. Not pork, stop it. No, oil. <laughs> the hogs. I can smell the hogs. Sorry Harley Riders, nothing personal. Just an in-joke. Oh, tar strips, gotta love those, eh? Fresh tar strips. Great. <laughs> Don't like tar strips. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider, out.